In this video, I'm going to show you how to resize inside of Adobe Spark. What's up, guys? Thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Nate Hibbert, and this is Wingman University, where we try to help you start and scale a print-on-demand business. Before we jump into any over-the-shoulder today, uh, I want to address that I use Spark for my print-on-demand business, so I have to resize images quite a lot to fit on the different products that we're printing on. Uh, but this information can also be helpful for anyone using Spark for social media, say, uh, because each platform will have its own native size. So say Facebook is going to be different from Instagram. Uh, and knowing those sizes and making your graphics fit for those different sizes or different platforms, excuse me, uh, is a good thing to do because then nothing will get cut off and those images won't be distorted. That's the purpose of today's video, but let's go ahead and jump into some over the shoulder. So here we are inside of Spark Post, and this is a design that I made for a t-shirt. I specifically made it the exact sizing that I know that I would need, uh, but again, this will work for any social media things, whatever native sizing you want to design for. Uh, so the way that we're going to go about resizing this now for a different product that I would want to sell this on uh, is over here on the right hand side. This last tab is called resize. If I go ahead and click on this, there's going to be a bunch of uh, things for social media as Spark is mostly made for social media, but you can also make this a custom size and that's what I'll be focusing on today. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click this custom size and it's going to tell me the exact size that we currently have our artboard as or uh, the sizing for this graphic that we have. I call this an artboard. And now I know I want to change this size. So I actually have a note on my computer uh, that reminds me of two things. One, the sizing for each product that I want to be selling on and also to download uh, each size. Because once I go ahead and change this, I actually have to download it. So first thing I should do is download my design for the t-shirt, that way I have it saved. And then when I go to change it, I can download it again for the next product that I'll be resizing for. We have that first one saved, it's called Cat and it's my PNG right there. Uh, and so now we can go back to our note and say the next product that I want to resize for is hoodies. And this is going to change the size from 4,500 to 5,400 to 4,500 by 4,050 pixels. So we'll go to this custom. We'll see that we just have to change this last number because the first one's going to stay the same. So this is going to be 50. Oops. This is going to be 40, 50. We can hit done and it's going to resize our image. Now, as much as I love Spark, unfortunately, it's not 100% perfect when it resizes some of these graphics. So we will have to mess around um, with our graphic to make it look good again for this different size. It's all the same elements. They're all the same colors. You don't have to change any of that. Uh, but we're just going to have to rearrange some of the graphics so that it was close to what we had from before. It will have to be slightly different since it is a different size, but that's basically the graphic we had before. If I wanted to, I could shift click all of these to make sure that I've grabbed all of them and then move it back towards the middle so it's not offset at all. And there we go, just a few clicks, some arranging things, um, it will make it work on a sweatshirt or a hoodie as well. But remembering, like my note says, uh, that we have to download this now. Don't go ahead and change the size without downloading it because then you're just uh, rearranging this for yourself and going into the next size. So that's something we want to do here is go up to this download button. Again, I'm going to download as a PNG with a transparent background because that's what works for print on demand. Okay, so that's two out of the three done. Uh, a little note that I should also probably put on my own personal note, but something I want to tell you guys is that you can rename this image in between each one. So say for this last one, uh, we're going to be resizing for a pop socket. So I can copy this and paste this right into the title. So that way, when I go to my download folder later, I don't just have cat, cat one, cat two, I'll actually have cat pop socket if that's what I want to name my file. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, so, but we are going to re size for that pop socket. So 485 and 400 by 485. And we're going to go to our customs and we're going to change this to 485. You actually have to hit tab twice if you want to switch this over because this uh, will rearrange the width and the height. So if I were to click this button now, it will make the width what the height was and vice versa if we hit it again. Um, so I always have to hit tab twice when I'm doing this and then 485 uh, still in pixels and we can hit done. And then this is more of a square and I know for my pop sockets, um, that has to be more towards the middle. So for hoodies and sweatshirts, I like, or for hoodies and t-shirts, excuse me, uh, I like the design to be nice and close to the top, but for pop sockets, I want it to be as centered as possible. So it looks like the alignment of our design has not changed a lot, but we want to move where this graphic is in relation to the artboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, shift clicking all of these things, moving this down to the center. 
or as close to the center as I can. And then I'm actually gonna resize this whole thing because pop sockets are actually round, uh, so it might cut off some of the edges. So I'm just gonna kind of guess at where the center is and we can check it when we go to upload, we'll see how it looks so we can come back and fidget with it if we didn't quite get it right. But I've been doing this enough uh, to know that that's gonna look good on a pop socket. And again, we just have to go to download. But this time, because again, pop sockets are slightly different than t-shirts, we actually want it with a solid color background. Um, so that's something else you can think about when if you're using this for social media, um, you know, the file type that you want. I would probably guess most of the time you're gonna use JPEG, uh, but if you do use a PNG, you probably want a solid color PNG as I don't think you want a transparent PNG for something like uh, Facebook or Instagram. Maybe you do, but just keep that in mind as you're downloading these files. So I'm gonna hit solid background. It's gonna download and then there we go. We have our new file, but it is called PopSocket so we can identify it a little bit easier. So I hope that that video was helpful for you guys. If you'd like to see more tips and tricks about Spark specifically, you can click this playlist up here. And if you'd like to see me actually use this tool for our print on demand business and how I'm creating designs in under 10 minutes, you can click this playlist down here. And if you'd like to see the new things that we have going on, the new episodes and content we have coming out, you can subscribe to the channel down here. But until the next video, I'll see you guys around.